Welcome back to the Data Science with MATLAB video series. In this video, we'll work on predictive modeling or machine learning. All right, so we went back and um, performed our analysis over all of the years. We've done our pre-processing, um, and we've got a good subset of data to continue to work with. Now we want to do um, a prediction of the damage costs based on the storm events and the other variables that we have in our table that we've been working with. So we'll need to do a couple of steps. Um, first, we'll explore different types of um, ways to, to approach the problem, then um, talk about data preparation, how to train and test the model, and then sort of what to do with it in the next step. So um, in this case, we have a lot of ways, You know, just generally speaking with predictive modeling, there are many, many ways to approach it depending on your goals and the situation, your, your data situation. Um, so, you know, for example, you could do curve fitting, um, classification, regression, neural networks, deep learning, all of these kinds of things. And um, what's nice about MATLAB, uh, doing these techniques in MATLAB, is that oftentimes we have apps that will help you really explore and um, try a bunch of different models as you're uh, going through this, these tasks. And so in this case, I'm trying to predict um, our damage cost. And so that's a numeric prediction, so I'll use regression. And um, before then, we want to make sure that we're in, we get the data in the right orientation for regression or for machine learning. So let's take a look at the data that we have, uh, just as a reminder. So we have our location, um, the state, the uh, time information, the type of event, the storm duration, uh, and the damage costs. And so uh, we want to be able to, uh, for our prediction, we need to uh, capture all of the information that might be useful to predict. And so we want to predict um, based on time, uh, but not necessarily in a time series way. We just want to represent the time information. So we can uh, just split up the year, month, day, and hours and use that in the model to see how those are uh, influencing um, the predict or the costs. Uh, so for example, you know, a blizzard in July likely is more costly. And so we'll use that information in the model. Uh, another thing that we want to do is um, to remove the infrequent classes. And so in this case, we'll use we'll remove anything that has less than 200 um, events. So whenever we're building models like this, we also want to partition the data so that we have a data set held out for testing. So we'll split up our data into training and testing sets and 70-30 uh, split. So now I'm going to train our model. And we use an app. And so here I'm just, um, I open the regression learner and we'll select the data. So I'm just going to select the training data set that we created. And I want to select the response. So that's what I'm trying to predict, which is our damage total. And then I can select or deselect the data I don't need. So um, for example, I want, uh, I don't need the property and crop damage or latitude longitude because I'm representing that data in a different way. With regression, we've got a bunch of different models. And so if you have some indication of what model you might want to use, you could select that. Or you know maybe you know that it's linear, you could select all, all linear. In this case, I'll just select all of them. Why not? Depending on how many cores you have available, you can use parallel, and that'll take advantage, um, train many, as many models as you can at once. And then you can take a great look at the visualizations, you know, even while it's training, um, to explore, you know, see some of the patterns, perhaps. And then there are some nice visualizations once the models have trained to see, um, to validate the models. So for example, you can look at residuals and um, you know, examine the uh, predictions versus the actual data. And so the visualizations also help with this. You know, for example, um, some of these categories uh, have a lot of outliers, uh, like our hurricanes, and, um, you know, it's, it's able to predict the, or the lower values much better than the higher values. And so these are the kinds of things that we want to look at in the app um, and, you know, take advantage of uh, by training all of these different models. So once we're happy with a model, um, we can actually export it, so we can start to use it for predictions later. And um, not only can we export the model, but we can generate the code. And that way we can um, repeat the same exact steps that we went through, 
But using a function instead of you know going through uh, using the app every time, you can very quickly use the function after this and also learn how to uh, um, adapt the model yourself. I exported the model from the app and now I'm going to use it in our prediction. So uh, when you export the model from the app, it's actually inside of a struct and it contains information about the model um, and even a function to help you predict using that model, uh, taking the same um, steps and the same variables as before. The app actually held out data for testing, uh, for training and validation. We also did that before training the model. And so now we want to test the model on our test data that we you know, had not passed into the app. And so uh, now I'll predict based on the test data and I can use a histogram of the errors or how far away um, the model predicted from the real data. Whenever we um, deploy this model and we put it into our app, we're gonna be getting the information um, real time. So uh, we'll type in the location and the type of event, um, but we basically just wanna make sure we have the same steps followed and the, the data is in the same organization or the same types uh, that we originally trained the model. And so uh, it's, you know, it would be very expensive to have a tornado uh, right now in Massachusetts. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll look at scaling up our calculations to big data.